Hey everybody, this is Colton with POSGuys.com. Uh, and are you considering RFID and are wondering if it's right for you? Uh, you know, we've gotten several calls asking that exact thing lately. So we figured uh, right now is as good a time as any to make a video and talk about it. Uh, because RFID can make a business more efficient, but like most things, it's not a magic bullet that can fix any problem. Um, when working with clients to see if uh, RFID is suitable for their use case, we typically ask them a few specific questions about their operation and pain points. So in this video, we'll be kind of guiding you through similar questions that you could consider for your own business. The first question that you need to ask yourself is what problem are you trying to solve with RFID? You know, for most people, the answer boils down to some variation of tracking something more accurately or efficiently. Probably the biggest use case uh, that we see are operators primarily in the warehouse and manufacturing space, but this applies to other places as well, uh, that are trying to speed up their inventory counts. And RFID doesn't require a direct line of sight the same way that a barcode scanner might. So an employee could theoretically wave a reader around the warehouse, a uh, reader like this, and you know, scan hundreds of items in a second, where you know, scanning each individual barcode could take forever. Um, tracking assets is another popular use case. If you need to slow down operations because your employees are spending a bunch of time searching for a tool that might not even be there, that costs money. And RFID assisted tracking allows you and your staff to immediately find the location of any asset in your warehouse, regardless of where it's at. We've also seen RFID being used to improve accuracy in picking and shipping departments, especially for warehouse and manufacturing operations. RFID can be used to help uh, employees find the item that they're looking for quicker and ensure that they're picking the correct item because you're kind of eliminating that human factor a little bit, right? Similar to shipping, uh, improving accuracy and speed in receiving departments is another area where we're seeing a lot of traction. Um, Walmart and Target are notable examples of companies that are doing this right now. On a similar note, we've talked with a few folks who've been looking to use RFID tags to track an item once it's left their operation, so outside of the four walls, uh, either to confirm that a shipped item has arrived at a construction site before sending a crew to do the installation, uh, or just to track tools that are being deployed in a field service capacity. Uh, in that case, you're probably looking for more of a GPS-enabled tag. Um, a, a, normal active RFID tag is only get, gonna get to around 100 feet uh, in read range, so it might not be as effective for that, but they do make tags that have both. Um, but that's something to consider if you're just looking to track the item once it's shipped. Maybe a full RFID solution isn't the right approach. You know, maybe you could use, uh, you know, just a GPS enabled system and call it good. Um, However, I do suppose that putting an RFID tag on a container uh, going to a job site would make it then easier to find that container once crews do arrive at the site. So that might be a benefit, but it's kind of a, you know, cost versus reward thing. So that's something to keep in mind. But warehousers and manufacturers aren't the only ones that get in on the fun. Um, on the entertainment and hospitality side of things, uh, we've seen businesses start to put RFID tags in guest wristbands and encode them with information. Um, you know, information about credits uh, that a customer's purchased, add-ons, uh, additional experiences, things like that. Uh, and this could be used to enable like a contactless payment setup uh, and potentially speed up entry to attractions. Uh, and it's also possible that that might reduce theft a little bit. Uh, you know, it's relatively difficult for a normal person to replicate an RFID tag uh, in the same way that you might be able to forge a normal wristband or, you know, just like a printed ticket. Um, Disney is an example of a company that's done that with their magic bands. Um, they've seen some good success, so there is some precedent for doing that sort of technology. Um, so like in summary, for most RFID applications, the use case typically boils down to tracking something. Um, if you're trying to use RFID for a use case other than tracking something, it might not be the best technology. That's not to say it won't be useful. Uh, for your operation, and that's not to say that it might not be the best approach, um, but there might be a better tool out there. Um, but just because you're looking to track something with RFID doesn't mean that by default it's going to be the right fit. Barcode systems have been around tracking things for years, uh, and it's been doing it just fine. So our second question uh, kind of starts to help you narrow down and kind of, you know, <laughs> kind of qualify RFID as a technology you could use. And that question is to look at specifically what you are looking to track. 
Uh, there's a few like sub questions baked into this because uh, it's kind of an expansive topic. So let's dig into those just a little bit and I'll kind of go through some of the caveats there, right? So first question, right? Are the things that you're tracking, do they already have an RFID tag? Uh, you know, one of the reasons that a company like Walmart can get away with using RFID in a receiving and retail application uh, is because the product is coming pre-tagged by their suppliers. They've mandated that. Um, if you're a retailer or warehouse wanting to use RFID, you probably don't have that luxury. Um, you know, that's not to say that five years down the line, um, it won't be standard to put an RFID tag on anything. It's kind of hard to say, but right now that's not the reality. Um, so, you know, you'll need to weigh in the cost of the labels and the labor involved in actually putting them on and encoding them and getting them uploaded to your system before you can use it. Uh, that's a huge practical hurdle. You know, if you're needing to factor in that cost with each item, uh, that takes a big hit to that kind of internal ROI calculation that we've been talking about. Um, the next sort of thing to consider there is how valuable the thing you're tracking is. Uh, you know, if you're looking to track an item that's only worth $10, it might not make sense unless you're looking to bundle them into a pallet and track the pallet as a whole. That's a good application. Um, but then even then, you know, if you're looking at something as big as a pallet, you might be able to just use a barcode and accomplish basically the same thing at a fraction of a cost, especially if you're not going to be tracking things on an item level, uh, because presumably if you're breaking out that pallet, um, you know, you're going to want to be able to keep track of the individual items, and those probably already have a barcode on them. Um, but it's totally different calculation if you're looking to track a thousand dollar piece of merchandise or maybe a thousand dollar tool, you know? So that might be a better fit, especially if that item is temperature impact sensitive and you want to keep track of that data as it moves through your operation. So the next thing to consider then is how many things are you looking to track and where are they located in your operation? You know, if you're only looking to track a hundred items in a single room, especially if it's a low value item, you're probably gonna spend more on an RFID solution than you would have just spent on the labor to track it using a properly uh, configured barcode system. Uh, and since radio signals can travel quite a bit, you know, they can even go through walls in some cases, uh, you risk scanning more labels than you originally intended. Uh, and that could be a huge pain, you know, if you're trying to scan a single pallet of items uh, for a particular shipment and you end up scanning items from across the room or, you know, even better yet, like totally in an adjacent room uh, and you're going to get all these bad reads, right? And it's going to be really hard for you to figure out what exactly is in that pallet. Uh, you know, to prevent that, you may need to install some sort of barrier to isolate your scanning area. Um, and you know, that certainly adds some additional complexity that you'll have to grapple with. Um, a pro of a barcode is that, you know, while it can't scan multiple items at the same time, it does offer a little more spatial accuracy and reliability with the reads. Um, and since a barcode scanner captures each code individually, you don't have to worry about accidentally scanning more items than you intended that are like off in a corner or somewhere. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Uh, and then finally, what is the item that you're trying to track made up of? Um, you know, metallic and liquid filled items can disrupt a tag's ability to send and receive out information. Um, they kind of prevent the signals from going back to the way that they need to in order to work properly. You can get around that, but you know, that does involve like specialized tags with an air gap between the tag and the tracked item. And that adds to the cost. Um, that's not necessarily a deal breaker if you're like a chemical plant and you're looking to track the movement of potentially hazardous or controlled material around your operation. Getting that accuracy that a well-designed RFID system provides isn't a bad proposition. It might be a good thing even for just the peace of mind of it all. But, you know, if you're like a grocer looking to take a metal shopping cart full of beverages through a reader, you're going to have a hard time getting an accurate or reliable scan on that. So, you know, that's a thing to consider. So when you put these all together, you know, there's a lot of things to consider there. Um, you know, I recently read about a rug store who put RFID tags on their rugs before stocking them, right? And so these rugs are rolled up very tightly and they're bound in this like exterior film to protect them. Um, and they're stored in these like narrow racks in this warehouse. Uh, and, you know, sometimes these rugs would get returned to the wrong bay. Uh, and if an employee wanted to try to check to make sure, they had to like unroll it to see if they had the right one. Um, and these are like $1,000 plus rugs, right? 
So you, they would have uh, customers come in asking if they had a particular rug and an employee would go and try to take a look, couldn't find it, say, hey, we didn't have it. When in reality they did, it's just in a bay on the other side of the aisle. So there's lost sales opportunities there. And so what they did is they put this RFID tag in each of the rugs. So when they're stocked up, you know, they can just use a little RFID reader. They can't find it, scan it, and it'll kind of get them to the right area so they can confirm 100% that they have the rug and help them find it quicker and easier. Uh, and because of that, they were able to increase sales uh, and reduce the, you know, the average turnaround time for an item if it got misplaced. Uh, and that's an example where RFID made sense, right? Like you could argue that they could have been a little bit more organized. Um, and that's certainly a consideration, uh, but there's an employee compliance piece there that was really tricky and RFID streamlined that. Um, and you know, this is a situation where a missed sale on a thousand dollar rug hurt the company. Uh, and because they were able to turn more of those, they were able to make their money back and more. And that sort of contrast against like another use case where an apparel store that's selling a shirt, uh, selling clothing that's around $50 a piece um, that are somewhat easy to identify at a glance. Uh, that In that situation, if they were looking to do RFID, they probably wouldn't have the same pit impact. And even if you're a sporting goods store that's selling like thousand dollar bikes, um, that might not make as much sense, especially if the bikes are easy enough to find on their own. So, you know, lots of different things sort of weigh that decision, right? There's technical hurdles there. Just because you're tracking something and that thing is expensive doesn't necessarily mean that an RFID system is going to drive the return on investment that you're going to need in order to make the investment. Um, and our third question sort of hits that home and kind of ties it up, right? And the big thing that you're going to need to consider, and this is probably the biggest like practical consideration, uh, is who is going to design, implement, and then support the system that you're planning to build. Setting up RFID isn't a simple undertaking. Uh, you know, while a barcode system could reasonably set up in a day or two and you can scan your item, uh, your inventory in, you know, after that, RFID systems are a whole different beast. Uh, the hardware needs to be configured more specifically. Um, there's a whole spectrum of RFID tags. Um, you know, these are just like one example, but we literally have a book that's like this thick, full of different RFID tag options that you can choose from. Uh, and then, you know, a more uh, very practical consideration is that most ERP inventory and point of sale softwares don't natively support RFID in the same way that they do a barcode. Uh, so you're probably looking at onboarding a whole new piece of software and paying someone to uh, develop uh, support for your existing system. And if you're a little overwhelmed by all that, you kind of have a few options. You could, of course, do it yourself. Um, if you have technically minded folks on staff, you could pay someone to do all the research, figure out which pieces of equipment you need uh, and get that all kitted out. Um, there are some companies like ourselves that sell sort of a pre-packaged system uh, that's going to include the software and the hardware and the tags in a single package. Um, and those are great for small to medium sized business with relatively standard tracking needs uh, because they're quick to set up and generally low cost. Uh, the rug store example that I mentioned earlier would be a good candidate for something like that. If you're in need of a more flexible setup, um, or maybe you already have an existing ERP system that doesn't have RFID support, but you kind of want to integrate with that because uh, you've spent a lot of money on it, of course you want to stick with it, um, you could work with a consultant or an integrator. Uh, we do this type of work as well. And what they can do is they can sort of scope out your operation, sort of give you an idea of the uh, custom hardware that you might need to purchase. Uh, and then what we could do there, you know, is sort of after we've built out that hardware package, we could then integrate uh, like an off the shelf RFID software um, to sort of meet your needs. Um, going with this route does give you a little more flexibility at scale without ballooning the budget too much. So those three different options make up the vast majority of the deployments uh, for RFID setups, at least that we've seen. But it always helps to chat with somebody uh, to sort of qualify that out and see which approach might be better for you. It's kind of hard in a video like this to detail out all the different considerations. I've certainly tried my best, uh, but there's no you know, definitive flow chart that you can sort of lead someone down uh, to qualify uh, a solution like RFID. You know, it's really one of those things where you kind of got to dig down. Um, you know, anecdotally, I would say that like three fourths of the people that call into us are looking at an RFID solution 
ultimately come to the d decision that a barcode solution does what they're needing to do. Maybe the issue that you're looking at isn't a purely technological hurdle. You know, maybe there's a staff element to it. You know, maybe there's a compliance issue there that's sort of throwing your numbers off. Uh, so those are all things to consider. Um, this video was intentionally, you know, just kind of made as a introduction, a primer. It doesn't have all the answers, but I hope that it was at least a little bit useful. Uh, if you're considering RFID and you still have some questions, you think, hey, I've gone through this video, I still think this might work for me, feel free to give us a call. Uh, you know, we are having conversations like this all the time with customers. We'll sort of lead you down this list of questions, sort of get a better idea of what you're looking at. Uh, and, you know, we might be able to get you pointed in the right direction. Uh, but with that, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, and I hope you have a great day. Take care.